charges filed against Africa Bambata at all? Absolutely not. Not today, not yesterday, not the day before yesterday, not ever. The question now is what happens next? Can we ever find out the truth of what really occurred? And are there other victims out there who have yet to come forward? Or is this a case that will only be tried in the court of public opinion? Here's what both sides have to say. In our exclusive interview, Africa Bambada emphatically maintained he is not a sexual abuser. Do you feel now you are among that group of people falsely accused? Oh, most definitely. I mean, there's always been things in our community where you falsely accuse people or people have sit in the prisons, or, um, you know, political prisoners and, and, and groups like that. Um, that they wait to 10, 15, 20, even 30 or 40 years before they find out that this person was um, railroaded. But Ronald Savage believes there are more victims out there and that the statute of limitations should be eliminated. No one can tell anyone when they're ready to let stuff out. And especially if you haven't went through what I went through and other people went through. It's like, how dare you? Besides Bambada, have you ever been with any other man before and after the Bambada story? Being that you've been hurt coming up as a young kid, have you ever thought about hurting or molesting other kids? If you are not gay, how can you do those things and not be gay? This is what some people might say. How could you ever even get caught up into that situation if you don't have that gay feeling or them gay tendencies? You got to know better. You know, other people say things like, Bam Bada molested all the boys out there in Bronx River. Have you ever seen Bam Bada molesting other young boys that's out there that you know of? And Black Power family, welcome to another Sarnetta TV exclusive interview with my beloved brother, Ron Savage in the building. We're going to try to go deep in depth with my brother Ron Savage's story. Questions that you never heard of. And we're just going to go in and he's just going to be as real as he can be in this interview. And first I'm going to say to you, my brother, peace and black power to you, my brother. How are you, brother? Yeah, I'm doing real good, man. Real good, man. Just just came from work. <laughs> um, yesterday, I noticed when I gave you a call, I noticed you was on ground. You was on the ground. You was in, I mean, doing the work as usual. Tell the people a little bit about that before we get heavy into our discussion. Uh, what was you doing yesterday? You always staying heavily active. You're not just talking. You are always boots on the ground trying to help other people. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, yesterday um, I was up uh, up in the Bronx uh, with the National Action Network. That's uh, Reverend Al Sharpton's organization, and uh, we were we were marching. It was uh, uh, save save the youth and stop the violence march. Yeah, because when I was talking to you, I hear the people. Right. Background. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what's up. Yeah, man, I'm 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 always out there. Always boots boot, boots to the ground. Boots to the ground. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've I've always 
uh, participated in, in marches and rallies. You know, that's who Ron Savage is. You know, that's what I do. I don't just sit back. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna talk the talk, I might as well walk the walk too, because I would be a hypocrite if I'm sitting there talking about something and chastising other people if I don't take the necessary steps that I'm talking about. So that's why I march and I try to participate in everything that's positive, especially about saving the youth. All right, All right my brother, beautiful. Um, you picked up the name Bee Stinger. Have you ever been a DJ? Have you ever been an MC? And if so, or if not, why you chose the word Bee Stinger? Like, what's that about? Okay. Um, when I was younger, um, you know, I used to hang out with the with the Zulu Nation and stuff, and um, they was the ones that that gave me that name. Because when I first met the the Zulu Nation Council, I just was playing all around, them, you know. And then they was like, they was like, "Yo, you need a nickname," you know. So they started calling me Ronald B. But that Ronald B. only lasted a day. <laughs> it was like, you know, they was like, "You need, we need another name." So it was an, uh, another member of the Zulu Nation. He was like, he was like, "Yeah, you look like you look like a bee stinger," you know what I'm saying? Because you always trying to sting the girls, you know. I was saying I was trying to sting the girls, but I just never could get a girl, you know. So they cause they started calling me Bee Stinger, and that that nickname stuck, you know. But I was never uh, a rapper or MC. Um, I used to be at uh, DJ Jazzy J's house, you know. That's Africa Band by this DJ, you know. I used to be practicing DJing all the time, you know what I'm saying. And then uh, when I got the, the the courage, you know what I'm saying, souped up in my mind, you know what I'm saying, I could DJ and stuff, you know what I'm saying, because they used to suit me up in Jazzy's house like. I a DJ, so I took that. I took that to Kips Bay Boys and Girls Club, and you said Jazzy Jeff, uh, DJ Jazzy J. That was that was Africa Bambada's DJ. Oh, okay. You know, so we were at Kips Bay Boys Club, and Red Alert put me on the wheels of steel. You know what I'm saying? I was DJing, and it was like, ah, sh ah, sh <laughs> so no, I, I wasn't going in. I sucked. They caught me off beat Pete. <laughs> <laughs> they, they called me off BP, you know what I'm saying? I, I say like, I, I, I say like five minutes later, they took me off the, off the turntables and I never touched the turntables again. <laughs> So the word beast thing that just came from, you know, just a street name where they go by and they call you. Okay, because somebody might think that you have been a DJ at one time. All right, so that's pretty good. So let's, let's go into the Zulu Nation. Um... When you got exposed to Bambada, what made you wanted to be a Zulu Nation? Let's go there. Let's start there. Do you remember the year? Let's go into the year you became a Zulu Nation member. Okay. Um, when I first heard about um, the Zulu Nation, um, I was in uh, junior high school, and it was a, a, a group called the Crazy Eight Zulu Crew. Oh. They, yeah, they were from Monroe Projects uh, in the Bronx, you know, and big shout out to Chipper Lamar, Frank, Kevin, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And um, that was the first time that... Um, that I heard about the Zulu Nation, um, you know, because my cousin used to go with uh, one of the members from the uh, the Crazy A Zulu crew, and um, that's when I had met uh, Lisa Lee and uh, Smitty D. Shout out to Smitty D. Um, um, and that's how I heard about uh, Zulus. And then um, around that same time, um, during summer youth time, um, I I got introduced to uh, the Ch Chuck City crew. That was Disco King Mario's uh, group. You know what I'm saying? And that was the Black Spades. So at the same time I was introduced to the Zulus, I was introduced to the Black Spades. But everyone talked about the Zulus, so I had wanted to be down with the, down with the Zulu Nation, you know? And then, um, I don't know how, um, uh, 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 a girl in my building, she had hooked up. Me and her were, were really cool. I was like their little brother they, with their whole family and stuff. And um, she had hooked up with, uh, with DJ Jazzy J. And I was like, wow, DJ Jazzy J, you know what I'm saying? And, um, uh, you know, that's how I was introduced to Jazzy. And then, uh, you know, we became really cool. And then uh, we asked uh, Jazzy to play, into the, play in the park in Castle Hill Projects. And Jazzy played in the park. And that's how I was introduced to the, the rest of the, uh, the members of the Zulu Nation Council. And that's how I became uh, a, a member of the Zulu Nation. All right. That's what's up, man. Um, 
You always talk about Bronx River and Soundview. Can you tell us what was happening in Castle Hill? What was going on in Castle Hill at the time? Um, Castle Hill. You had all the other um, you had all the other uh, projects uh, like Bronx Dale, uh, uh, Soundview, Bronx River. Never, you know, all of them uh, kind of stuck stuck together. You know, Castle Hill was the only only uh, projects in that area that wasn't part of the Zulu Nation and the whole Africa Bambadas clique. And you know, just recently, um, I was uh, I was outside and I had ran into some um, old school brothers from from Castle Hill, and they were um, proud that I had talked about the whole Africa Bambada situation, and they were telling me that that back then, you know, when I was down first got down with Zulu and stuff, it wasn't that they were hating on me because I was a, a Zulu. They was trying to tell me about. Africa Bambada. You know what I'm saying? Because they had told me that he was always like that. And they was just trying to warn me. But I was so gun ho Zulu, Zulu. I didn't want to listen to them in my mind. It was like, oh, y'all hating on me. Oh, y'all trying to attack me or something. You know what I'm saying? But meanwhile, all that time, they was just trying to warn me about, you know, Africa Bambada and what he was about. Okay. Um, so, um, the next question I have for you was, um, you already ans answered it, it was, um, was, what was Bambada's connection in Castle Hill, if any? He had no connection in Castle Hill? Um, I had never seen Africa Bambada, um, in Castle Hill. Um, I don't want to say he wasn't in Castle Hill, you know what I'm saying? Um, but when I started noticing Bambada in Castle Hill and hanging out in Castle Hill is once uh, Jazzy J uh, had met the girl that lived in my, in my building and that's when all the Zulus started going to Castle Hill, including Africa Bambada. So that's when I started knowing who Afri Africa Bambada was and that's how I like really became friends and got to know Africa Bambada when he used to come up there with them. Okay. Do you think he was um in his recruiting stage, trying to recruit in Castle Hill because why is it that you're the only one that seems to be recruited in Castle Hill? Um, during that time, um, I was the only Zulu member, the only person in Castle Hill that was a member of the Zulu Nation, that was down with the Zulu Nation at that time. Um, there was no other uh, Zulus in Castle Hill other than B. Stinger. Um, you know, I don't, during that, that, that time before the abuse, you know, I didn't, I didn't know about, um, you know, what, what this man was into or anything like that. So as far as um, if he was there to recruit anyone, he recruited me. Okay. Yeah, he was just there having fun and, you know, you knew he was, um, a DJ, a rapper, and all of this shit. Okay, that's what's up. Um, did you feel a little strange going into other people's projects at a young age? Because, you know, all projects, they always had these little wars against each other. Who's the best project? Who's the best? Who's the baddest? Have you ever felt a little, you know, strange or, or fear come over you going into these other projects? Well, at that time... Um I didn't really have, have no fear or anything because um, I was down with the Zulu Nation and me hanging out with the members of the Zulu Nation Council, it quickly spread it throughout the Bronx and throughout our area that hands off, be stingers down with the Zulu Nation. Mm. So, you know, I was like going through the blocks like, yo, don't don't mess with me, you know what I'm saying? So it didn't, you know, I had no fear, no, 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 nothing. You know, during that time, um, I enjoyed the clout that I had, you know, um, because nobody, no, nobody messed with Beast Stinger, you know what I'm saying? I didn't even have to fight. <laughs> okay, um, were you a part of any other organization besides? Um, the Zulu Nation. Was you a part of any other squads that existed at that time? 
Um, during that time, um, no, the only, um, I was just, uh, down, um, with the Zulu Nation. Um, I was down with no, no other organization, um, during that time. Okay. There were three murders, assaults, rapes, molestation in these projects. Do you remember these? There was a lot of rapes and stuff. Um, yeah, I, 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 can, I can remember um, one time um, there was a, a, a rapist in our building in, in Castle Hill. Not, he didn't live in our building, but he was, he was in our building. And man, it's like we got everybody together looking for this guy. You know what I'm saying? Looking, you know, because, um, uh, you know, they were saying that he was a rapist. And uh, we chased him down the stairs and everything like that. They called the cops. They beat, we beat him up in the lobby and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I was aware of, of, of a lot of those um, situations. And, um, you know, I was kind of, you know, kind of scared, you know, for, for my mother, for my sister. You know what I'm saying? And um, during those times, you know, everyone um, took um, precautions. Okay. Um, we hear so much about the brothers being molested in these projects. We hear about the young boys being molested. I'm sure there were many girls molested or raped. Do you know of any of those stories that you could share with us? Ooh. Um. I don't know any. I don't know. Um any stories um, offhand, um, but, you know, if, if, if I did, um, I wouldn't, um, like, name their, their names and stuff like that, but, um, <gasps> um, I can speak about, I can speak about someone, um, someone that, that was related to me, um, she was in front of the building, Monroe Projects. She was in front of the, her boyfriend lived in Monroe Projects. She was in front of the building, and she was going to her up to her boyfriend's house, I, I believe, to get something or something like that because they always in front of the building. And she had went into the elevator, and another gentleman had followed her into into the lobby, into the elevator, and um, he tried to rape her. She, when the elevators opened, I remember her telling us that she started screaming and running down the, running down the stairs. And uh, my friend Kevin had ran up the stairs and they had ended up chasing the guy out the building and they chased him all the way to, uh, Bruck, uh, to Bruckner where the highway is. Uh, this is in the, in the Bronx. And he, uh, they ended up catching him, the police, and he turned out to be a correction officer. Wow. Yeah. Dang. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, brother. Um, besides Bambada, have you ever been with any other man before and after the Bambada story? Um, I can remember this was back when I was, um, oh gosh, this is back summer youth time. You know what I'm saying? When I was um, when I was first getting um, a summer job, we were in uh, downtown, downtown uh, uh, in in the city, New York, and um, uh, we was doing signing some papers or, or something. And then I remember some guy um, coming up to me and telling me um, he was like, "Yo, you into girls?" I'm like, yeah. He was like, yeah, you know, I know where there's some girls, you know, and, 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 and you can get busy and stuff like that. And I'm like, yo, let's do it. Because I had never been with a girl before. So I'm like, yo, Ron, you about to get some. <laughs> so so we, we went up the stairs and whatnot. So as we going further up the stairs, you know, my red flags started going off. So, you know, I just started getting suspicious because we going up and up and up. So I'm like, where's these girls? So he's like, yeah, you know, you got to go right through these doors, but you got to take your pants down and get yourself ready. You know, talk about masturbation, you know, you, you got to get yourself uh, ready, you know, to get the girls. Man, I shot down them stairs so fast. I got out of there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was running. And yeah, the, he, he, he ended up getting arrested too. Wow. Yeah, but um, as far as, you know, after, after after that, the only thing um, was the, the, the Africa Bambada situation, and nothing took place after that or anything like that. All right. Um, okay. After, tell us about the Africa Bambada story. How did all of this happen? 
when did it happen, if you can remember? Try to take us all the way back to the beginning. When it first happened, uh, talk to us about that. Take us through it. Okay. Um, I was in the ninth grade. I had, had Bam's number. And, um, you know, I was cutting and I didn't want to get caught by the police officer, you know, in Stevenson High School, you know what I'm saying? So um, I was like, Dad, where can I go? Where can I go? So I was like, oh, bam, you know what I'm saying? So I end up calling Bam because, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I was like, yo, if I go to Bam house, maybe he'll tell me that I'm a Zulu, you know what I'm saying? Because I had never heard it from him, but I had heard it from everyone else that I was a Zulu, you know what I'm saying? But I wanted to hear from him, you know what I'm saying? So I had called Bam and um, he ended up paying um, for the cab um, for me to go to his house. And when I went to his house, um, it looked like they were DJing because there was records everywhere and the music was on. And um, Bam had told me that I could go into his bedroom. And when I went into his bedroom, um, there was a photo book on the bed. So I, I looked through the photo book and I'm like, whoa, I was taken back because there were uh, people that I, a lot of people in there that I knew, you know, they had their uh, private parts out and they were, hold, they were holding it. It was like they were proud of it and people with their pants down, you know, with their private part hanging out, pointing to it and all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I just got a little took, took back. And so at the same time that I was looking at the book, then he walks in, you know, so now, so now that, now, now that I think about it, I think that was the setup that, 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 you that book. exactly, exactly. You know, now that I'm older and, and I see the whole situation, that book was planted so I can do what I did to look through the book and feel comfortable that my friends were in this in this book you know so bam you know he comes in and he asked me did I ever masturbate and uh, you know he uh, had me take my um, take my penis out and um, he started he started jerking it you know what I'm saying and then he started jerking himself off and then um, bam had stepped out of the room and when Bam stepped out of the room, then the guy that was in the living room that was, that was DJing, he came into the bedroom with his pants already down. I got up off that bed and I jetted out of that house because I didn't know what was going on. You know what I'm saying? And I started, I started running. And then there was a lady um, on the highway. Um, she had picked me up. You know, I was crying and she was trying to get out of, out of, you know, what was uh, bothering me while I was crying. And I didn't, you know, I didn't say, I didn't say anything. Thing, um, at that time so at this time do you feel have you ever thought that you were homosexual after all of this took taking place have you ever had feelings of wanting to be with another man have you ever had feelings of man I'm a homosexual how what was your feeling after that um never was a homo <laughs> never was a homosexual um, I used to, I used to check myself, you know what I'm saying? I used to, when I'm walking in the street, you know what I'm saying? And when I notice that I'm not bopping or I'm just walking regular, I will feel some type of way. And I will relate back to everything that happened with, uh, with Africa Bambada. So I would start bopping and stuff like that in the street because I had to bop because then I felt like, like, like a dude, you know what I'm saying? Tough, you know what I'm saying? Manish, you know what I'm saying? And, and if I wasn't doing that, then I would always challenge my sexuality because feeling guilty or upset that all of this stuff had taken place. Um, and I could tell you something, this is going to be the first time that I said this on Sidenetta TV. <laughs> when I get females now, I don't like the dainty, yeah, yes, 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 be stinger, yes. I like that rough gangster rrr, type of female, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know if that's related to that or not. <laughs> After your first encounter with Bam, why did you keep going back for the second and third time? Mm -hmm. um, I definitely want to get this straight with the people. Um, 
I never was going back to Africa, Bambada. I went to Bambada's house one time when that incident took place, and I never went back to that man's house again. The only time I could say that I went to Bam's house after that, it was way after that. I don't know if it was, I think it was years or something like that. That's when everybody was there, when we were picking up records from Bam's records house. off to his house. I made sure that I was never ever going to be in that man's house ever again alone. And when this abuse took place, Bam was coming to my house. Um, it was a member of the Zulu Nation. Bam had went with them to my house. And when I opened the door, it was my friend and it was Bam. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. And this was after the abuse. So I'm like, okay, you know, like this man is in my house. You know what I'm saying? So after that, that's when Bam started coming to my house. And, you know, I was afraid not to answer the door because it's Africa Bambada, you know what I'm saying? And back then he was powerful and strong, you know what I'm saying? And he would come to my house, you know what I'm saying? And start masturbating and, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, that's when he started uh, putting his penis in between my legs and humping me up and down and all of that, you know, stuff. And, um, you know, this took place um, a, few, a few times and, you know, a after that, you know, when I'm with Bam, he will pet my pet my my head and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if I was his chick or something. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't like. That's why now I don't like people like to touch my head and stuff because it reminds me. It reminds me of that. Um, you know, after a while, after a few times that Bam had came to my house and did that, each time I'm like, yo, I'm not, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that because I didn't feel right. You know what I'm saying? And I knew it was wrong. But at the same time, I was, you know, scared because it was Bam. And I didn't want him to say that I wasn't going to be a Zulu anymore because I didn't do what, you know, what he wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? So after, after a while, I just... With each time that he came to my house, I just got stronger and stronger to tell him no to the time when he came to my house and I didn't answer the door because I was like, I'm not going to answer the door for him. And he would come again. I would not answer the door. He would come again. I would not answer the door. And he got the message that I'm not down with that shit. Was you living with your parents at the time when he was coming? And when he would come, was your mother home? Was your pops home? What was going on? Um, he would come to my house um, when my parents wasn't there. Because like I said, you know, I hung out with them and they used to come to my house. So they were aware of when my parents were there and when my parents weren't there. Oh, they was going to work when they... Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right, my brother. Um... Can you name some of the celebrities, DJs, and rappers who were touched by Bam? Red Alert, DJ Scratch, KRS-One. Um, you, you yourself said you opened up that photo book and you was like, wow, you seen so many people in that book that you would never believe. Can you reveal some of that information with us? Um, I could just say straight off the back, Red Alert was not down with that stuff. So we need to clear that, clear that record, you know. Um, my thing is, you know, I know um, some people that was down with that, um, but I'm, I'm not into naming names. I'm not into trying to embarrass other people because I came out and told my story and I may feel uncomfortable because now everyone knows that you know this took place with me so now I'm going to embarrass the next person so that they can be humiliated too so I'm not down with that I don't name names I don't I, I don't do that you know what I'm saying and like I said I do know some people but I would never ever in my life do some conniving stuff like that you know what I'm saying because my whole thing is if these people did not come out and say nothing 
who the hell am I to say anything? You know what I'm saying? People have families now. You know what I'm saying? And people and, and people probably want want to forget about that stuff that happened, like I did. You know what I'm saying? And that's one thing that you do. You never try to say or or try to get another victim to, to come out and say something by naming their name and telling their story before they can even get to say something. I would never do nothing like that. Some people came out saying that you took that bag, you got paid. How much truth is that? Did you really get paid by Bambada? I heard they offered you $5,000 or something like that or maybe more, I don't know. For the record, this lie was told by one individual. That is one million percent a lie. Bambada has never, ever paid me off. And I would never take money from that man. So, for all you people who may think that and want to put that in chats, you know what I'm saying? Why are you out there spreading a lie? Africa Bambada has never paid me off. My lawyer has never ever met with Africa Bambada's lawyer. Ronald Savage has never ever met with Africa Bambada's lawyer. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, 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 I'm appalled that people would even think some bullshit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. Like, I would never take money from him. I never did take money from him. Okay. Oh, man. Um, what does your justice look like as far as concerning BAM? What does your justice look like? Um... My justice was me to be able to get this out of me. You know what I'm saying? I was holding this in me for so long. My justice is that now people are aware of what he's done to me and they can be more cautious around him and if they have their kids to be more cautious around him, you know? Um, truth be told, I wouldn't mind seeing Africa Bambada locked up. That's the honest to God truth. Um, um, the statute of limitations has um, has passed, so um, you know there's nothing really um, that anyone can do. Um, a lot of time has has passed ha passed by. Um, there's been a lot of uh, there has been a lot of lies told on this whole Africa Bambada situation as far as stuff like, you know, uh, 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 Beast Stinger got paid off by Africa Bambada and, you know, this and this and this and that. You know, those little things that were planted can actually get Africa Bambada off. So let me ask you. So why did you stop coming out? Why did you stop the fight against Bambada? Um, Everyone knows I had came out real strong about the whole Africa Bambada situation. I stopped talking about Africa Bambada when it was told that a certain person wants to bust my head to the white meat. When I was trying to be uh, humiliated on the internet by a certain individual by telling the people that I was ugly, that I was weak, that I'm this and I'm that, all because I came out 
and told the world that Africa Bambata had molested me when I was 15 years old. I was being attacked by an individual. I had told my therapist about this individual and showed her certain YouTube videos about this individual attacking me, slandering me, all because I had came out and told the world that Africa Bambata had did this to me. And my therapist was like, wow, this person really needs counseling. I had showed her some YouTube videos. And she had told me that, you know, this situation needs to be off of YouTube. You know, so she had told me to stop talking about it, stop talking to this individual, separate myself from this individual, separate myself from speaking about this on the internet and to keep this in a controlled environment, which is the doctor's office, where it began. Have you ever felt sometime like assassination attempt on your life for coming out against Bambata, Africa Bambata, because at that time, Africa Bambata was powerful. He had soldiers all over the place. Have you ever felt assassination attempt could be on your life for coming out? Um, when I first came out, yeah, I was, I was nervous. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I was like, damn, man, like, what's going to happen to me and stuff like that. Um, but quickly, even around that time, um, I was insured. I was insured protection. I was assured that nothing, you know, that nothing was going to happen to me. You know, um, of course you had, you know, the some I remember I remember one time um, I was up in the Bronx and it was uh, two Zulu members and they were like yo see how easy it is to get you because I'm always traveling by myself but that only happened one time you know but as as far as right now and that situation quick, quickly quickly got handled you know I'm not gonna say any more other than that but that situation quickly got got handled and um, nah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Um, as everyone knows, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm everywhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm everywhere. I'm at all the events. I'm everywhere. And I'm by myself like I always be. You know what I'm saying? Some people might say, why did you wait so long to come out? Why wait so long to come out? Um... You know, for those people who may say that, it's very hard to tell the world that your first sexual experience was with a man and you're not gay. As far as people close to me, they knew because I had told them. But to come out the way I came out and me being a man, a person who likes women, how, you know, how can I come out and say that this happened and people not think that I'm gay? Yeah, damn, that's deep there, brother. Oh, man. Um, have, being that you've been hurt coming up as a young kid, have you ever thought about hurting or molesting other kids? Because you remember, that came out on the internet and people said, oh, this dude, he, he molested somebody or he touched somebody. Have you ever had them feelings to set the record straight? I've never had those feelings. Um, if anything, you know, I, I try to protect people. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've, I've never had those feelings because I know what it felt like when I was molested so I'm not gonna you know force someone or trick someone into doing anything so no means no when someone says no then it's no um, Bambada 
we got to really make clarity of what's going on here. Have Bambada ever had anal sex with you? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Hell fucking no. <laughs> if you are not gay, how can you do those things and not be gay? This is what some people might say. How could you ever even get caught up into that situation if you don't have that gay feeling or them gay tendencies? Um, this is something that people have to understand. You know, and especially like the younger generation of today. Of course, something like that maybe not would take place or something like that because now your, your people are more educated to stuff like that. But you're talking about decades ago. You're talking about years and years ago when there was no real education about that. You know what I'm saying? And then you got to remember a 15 year old mind back then is not the 15 year old mind of today. Right. You know? And you have to remember at that time you're talking about someone who was very powerful in the hood. This man was a celebrity in the hood. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? So, and he was very powerful, you know what I'm saying? And rolled with so much people, you know what I'm saying? So, it's just like I said, you know what I'm saying? I was scared, I was intimidated, and you were talking about Africa Bambada, you know what I'm saying? And I just, at the times when it happened, I was just scared. But I need to be commended for getting the courage and the power to say no and not answer my door anymore. Some people might say, come on, Ron Savage, 15 years old, you got to know better than that. What do you say to that? I say to that... I did know better. That's why I stopped answering my door when I got the strength and the power and the encouragement to say no. Good point, yes. All right, um, what concrete proof do you have that he did this to you? Um, in 2000, I believe it was 2012, um, there's court records that uh, my ex-wife boyfriend, um, we were on the platform and he was, I guess, trying to menace me, trying to get me to fight him and he was stating, oh, I know about that Bambada shit and started going like that with his butt. That's in a police report and that's on court records. This was way before I came out on Africa Bambada. Um, you know, other people say things like Bambada molested all the boys out there in Bronx River. Have you ever seen Bambada molesting other young boys that's out there that you know of? You ain't got to give their names, but have you ever seen them interact with them? Yes, but I'm not going to name names. Okay, okay, my brother. So, um, do you fear of any retaliation that could come back to you for what you have said today? <laughs> How much more retaliation can come after someone says that they're going to bust your head to the white meat? You know what I'm saying? I mean, as far as... From the Zulu Nation? No. That's family. Oh, okay. Um, is there anything else you would like the people to know? The family. Uh, what else you would like the family to know about Ron Savage in this case here? 
Um, I just want everyone, you know, to know, just to get to know Ron Savage. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm a good dude. You know what I'm saying? Um, I am, um, you know, still fighting uh, with the Child Victim Act. You know what I'm saying? Um, I definitely hope that uh, that this law um, gets passed. Um, but in closing, I definitely want the world to think about something. And you have to take yourself back to the guy that has stabbed Africa Bambada. And there was a hit put out on this individual as far as what I'm hearing from different YouTube videos. I sat there and I told myself, I could have been that boy. That hit could have been put out on me. And in closing, um, you know, I, 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 I thank you for, um, for this interview. You know, I just wanted to get that stuff um, off, my, off my chest. Um, you've always been my brother. You've always been good to me. You, you know what I'm saying? You never um, disrespected me. Um, you always kept it real with me. And um, it's, it's an honor um, to even know, know you, I, you know. Um, and, and, and it's my pleasure. Um, you know, to, 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 to even, you know, speak and, and build with you. And I just want to humbly thank you um, for everything that you've done for me. And, um, and, you know, and another thing, I definitely want to um, thank you for inviting me to the Sarnetta TV Awards. It was the bomb, man. It was like I really en enjoyed myself. Um, it was well organized. Um, it was put together great. Um, all the nominees, it, that was excellent, um, that was powerful, and um, I definitely can't wait to next year's um, award. Thank you, brother. So now, in closing for real, give the people your social media, where can they contact you, give them your YouTube channel, because some people ask me, do Ronald got his own channel? Yeah. So let the people know what is your Facebook, what is your social media, what is your YouTube channel, where could they catch Ronald Savage doing this great work, brother? Yeah, you know, because a lot of people, they stop me on the street and they be like, yeah, I didn't even know you had a YouTube channel when I tell them, you know. Um, my YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com slash Ronald Savage. Um, my Facebook is facebook.com slash Ronald Savage. And you can always go to ronaldsavage.com. But definitely go to my YouTube, youtube.com slash Ronald Savage and su subscribe. Give me those thumbs up. <laughs> You're welcome, man. Thank you, my brother Ron, for an uh, excellent, excellent interview as always. Peace, brother. Peace. And Black Power. We out.